Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I'm a 44-year-old male, and my wife, 39, has been married to me for 11 years, we don't have any kids. We were a pretty chubby couple until two years ago when I had a blood test, and it revealed that I was prone to contracting diabetes, gout, and hypertension. It really scared me, so we both slowly started to live a much healthier life. I went from 117 to 85 kilograms, and my wife, let's call her Jane, went from 83 to 65 kilograms. We felt great, and needless to say, I never developed those diseases. We attended a gym almost daily in the afternoon, where AP worked as a coach. Let's call him Baldi. When my wife started getting in shape, I noticed most guys turned to look at her. I felt so proud of her. She is fairly busty, and she has magnificent legs. Of course, Baldi wasn't an exception. I noticed Baldi likes to check out women's butts. I've seen him doing it several times, and he likes to show off how ripped he is. When Jane and I became regulars at the gym, I noticed she was enjoying the attention she got from men. Once, we were using the elliptical machines. In front of them, there's a cable machine. Baldi took off his t-shirt and started doing crossovers. I turned to Jane with a look that said, Can you believe this guy? But she was staring at him, and she licked her lips. I saw Baldi, and I swear he was grinning. I felt crushed. I mean, I was getting in shape, but I wasn't as muscular and fit as he was. When we were driving home, I made a comment about Baldi showing off, and Jane said, Really? I didn't notice. I told her, You were staring. She said, I don't remember. I must have been thinking about something else. I shrugged it off and kept driving, but from then on, I noticed they were talking more frequently at the gym. Some weeks later, Jane was doing squats using the Smith machine. Suddenly, Baldi went to help her, isn't he nice? He was grabbing her by the waist, and I got angry. She finished the first set, and I went over and told him in a not-so-nice way, I got it from here. Baldi just smiled and told me, no problem, buddy, he calls everybody buddy, and walked off. Jane knows me very well, and when she heard my angry tone, she said, my God, OP. I told her, we'll discuss this at home. At home, the drama blew up. She called me immature and jealous. I told her I noticed he was trying to get into her pants. She said that she knew that, but she would never cheat on me. I asked her why she let him touch her, and she said she didn't want to be rude. After about an hour of arguing, we agreed to change gyms. So we went to another place to exercise, but Jane was resentful toward me in the following months. Her argument was that I don't trust her. In the third month after we changed gyms, a great opportunity opened up at my job, but it required me to work in the afternoons. We discussed it, and I took the job, which meant we had to attend the gym at different times. I went in the mornings, and Jane went in the afternoons. This is when everything went downhill. Jane's resentment grew, and we barely spoke. I sent her messages telling her about my day, that I missed her, and even sent memes. But she rarely replied, or when she did, it was just, yes, okay, same here, or ta ha ha. I was very worried and proposed couples therapy. She said I was the one who needed therapy because I was the one with trust issues. I agreed. I was so desperate to fix our marriage that I even started to believe it was all my fault. The following year, 2022, I went to therapy, but Jane's behavior didn't change. We weren't intimate anymore, she never seemed to be in the mood. I snooped through her phone, but didn't find anything suspicious. I looked in her car for a second phone. Nothing. I checked her phone again to see her map history. It only showed house work house gym house. Whenever I tried to talk to her, she just said she felt like she was going through a 40s phase. She said it would pass. I never had any proof of cheating, so I continued working and worrying. We live in a condo, 
and the security guard, a very cheerful man called Mr. P, greeted me one day. We chat a lot. He was touching his shoulder and told me that yesterday he had to move a heavy sofa and was in pain. I was sympathetic and that when he dropped the bomb, maybe you can arrange a meeting with your massa. I told him, who? He said, the guy who came yesterday to massage Mrs. Jane. It took me a second to process this. I asked him, do you have a video of him? I think he noticed how pale I went and hurried to show me. Guess who? Baldi, of course. He had come over a few times to massage my wife. I took the day off and started investigating. I asked a co-worker if I could borrow his car, and in the afternoon, I followed Jane. She parked her car at the mall where the gym is, and there was Baldi, waiting for her. They giggled and behaved like a couple, kisses, hugs, and I was nearly in tears. They walked a couple of blocks and went into a residential area. I tried to follow them, with my phone ready to record, but the guard stopped me and asked, Can I help you? I just said, What a nice couple. Do you know them? He said he thought they were newlyweds but couldn't tell me anything else. I called Jane, but she never answered. I went back to her car at the mall and wondered, Why didn't this place show on the map? I dialed again and I could hear her phone inside her car. That's why. I also found out Jane hadn't attended the gym in eight months. I didn't know that the previous night was the last time I'd sleep with Jane in the same bed. I returned the car and went home, then called my parents. Fortunately, my dad answered, and I told him everything. I was crying, and he comforted me, advising me to gather evidence. Obviously, my marriage was over, and I needed to collect whatever I could. He said he'd contact one of his friends, an excellent divorce lawyer. Jane called me after seeing the two missed calls. I just told her I was already home, and she said, I'm on my way from the gym. My but is killing me, yeah, I can guess why. When she got home, she saw me and asked, what happened? Why were you crying? Somehow, I managed to stay mentally focused. I smiled and told her I might have the flu, which is why I left work early. Don't come near me, it could be contagious. I'll get tested tomorrow and sleep in the spare room tonight. She agreed. That night, I cried silently and didn't sleep a wink. Nearly at midnight, I heard her giggling. I assumed she was messaging Baldi, but I couldn't find any direct evidence of her contacting another man. Then it hit me, how did I not see this earlier? I bet AP, a fair partner, is disguised as one of her female co-workers in her contacts. In the morning, while Jane was in the shower, I took her phone and created a session on my laptop, then put her phone back in the same place. We both know each other's phone unlock codes. The session works as long as her phone is near my laptop or on the same Wi-Fi network. And then, I saw it. Under a female name, the profile picture was just a dumbbell. I opened the chat, and most of the conversations were deleted. I'm guessing they used work-related phrases as code in case I snooped. Things like, can you deliver the papers on my desk? I knew she didn't have a desk at work. Or, going to the meeting, where are you? At the top of the chat was a message, boss is in his office. He's clueless. Pretty clever, I'm guessing I'm a boss in their little code since her actual boss is a woman. Jane got out of the shower and saw me. You look worse. Why don't you stay with your parents, she asked. I refused, thinking of all the evidence I still needed to gather. After Jane left the house, I contacted my dad. He gave me the name and number of the lawyer, and I called him, explaining everything. The lawyer told me the screenshots I took from my laptop wouldn't hold up in court. They don't have any real proof since AP's name wasn't visible and Jane was smart enough to leave parts of the conversation that looked pretty innocent. I could take pictures of them together at the mall, but she could argue they were just friends. And I couldn't follow them into the residential area without permission as that might get me into legal trouble. At work, I was in zombie mode, constantly thinking about how to gather evidence. Maybe I could install hidden cameras in the house, 
but Baldi rarely comes over and Jane might find them. Unless... I'm out of the picture. That's when I texted Jane, telling her I tested positive for the bug and would stay with my parents because I might need help. She liked the idea and said she would miss me but promised to call every day. After hanging up, I called my dad and my brother. When I got home, Jane had already packed a suitcase for me. She seemed so eager to get rid of me. I told her I would take my laptop, then quickly checked her messages. She had just sent, boss will be out of the office, wanna come to my desk. This was almost immediately after I told her I was positive for the bug. Good, she took the bait. We didn't have dinner, no kisses, no hugs. I noticed her checking her watch twice. As I left, I said, I'll miss you, half expecting her to shut the door in my face, but she walked me all the way to my car instead. I left, but my dad and brother were outside the building, keeping an eye out for Baldi. After half an hour, nothing happened. Then it hit me, why did she walk me to the car? Of course. Baldi was probably already inside the building, maybe even in her car. It would look suspicious if her massage therapist showed up at that hour. I raced back to the house, quietly sneaking inside. I could hear music coming from the bedroom and moaning. By the door, there was a sofa, and on it were their clothes, his and hers. I pulled out my phone to record and opened the bedroom door. There she was, my wife of eleven years, on all fours, with Baldi right behind her. I got a clear shot of both their faces as they turned in shock when I opened the door. Jane screamed and covered herself with the blanket. Baldi, trying to act like an alpha male, immediately got up and walked toward me, completely naked, I made sure to get a shot of him in action with my wife. He yelled aggressively, why don't you go for a walk, buddy? Without thinking, I hit him in the throat with an open hand, just like I'd seen Mel Gibson do in Ransom. Within seconds, Baldi was on the floor, coughing and gasping for air. I shouted, get out of my house, and threw his clothes at him as he scrambled to leave. By the time my dad, brother, and Mr. P were arriving, Baldi was already on his way out. I told them, I'll handle it from here, and closed the door behind me. Jane was still on the bed, trembling under the blanket. I said, I have never hurt you, nor will I get dressed. I'll wait for you in the living room. While I waited, I sent the video to my lawyer. His response came quickly, I'm sorry for you, but... Jackpot! A few minutes later, Jane appeared. She couldn't even look me in the eyes. I started recording. Why? I asked. She stayed silent. Was I such an awful husband to you? Tears rolled down her face, but still, no answer. Do you love him? She shook her head, but not a single word escaped her lips. I stood up, slamming my hand on the table. Say something, Jane. Damn it. Her eyes widened in fear, and she started trembling again, like a scared puppy. I had never yelled at her before. I sat back down and tried to calm myself. My lawyer will contact you for the divorce. Get yourself a lawyer, I said quietly. For the first time, she spoke. We can fix this. Fix what? I asked, my voice cold. Our marriage was over the moment Baldi came into the picture. You chose him over me. It was a mistake, she pleaded. No, it wasn't a mistake. It was a choice. You made your choice, and now these are the consequences. What did you think would happen when I found out? Silence again. Go to your sisters and tell her the truth, or I will show her the video. She didn't argue. Jane quietly went to the bedroom and began packing. I followed her, watching as she neatly folded her clothes. Since two days ago, I had been trying to convince myself that the woman in my house wasn't my wife anymore. But watching her now, with her graceful movements and those small habits I once loved, it hit me hard. I couldn't take it. I went to the spare room and broke down, ugly crying. I heard her close the front door soon after. 
She must have picked up her clothes from the sofa, and I realized she had even made the bed where I had caught them together. I collapsed to the floor, feeling utterly drained. Much later, I called my dad. He told me Baldai had wanted to press charges, but Mr. P reminded him that he didn't sign in, so technically, he was trespassing. The condo could sue him if they wanted to. Baldai quickly dropped the idea and left. My nosy brother, of course, had his ear pressed to the door the whole time, until my dad yanked him away and dragged him to the car. I was exhausted. I hadn't slept well in days, and eventually, I passed out in the spare room. The next morning, I woke up to a flood of messages from Jane, apologies, begging for a second chance. I didn't even bother reading them all. I just blocked her. A little later, my sister-in-law called. Apparently, Jane hadn't told her the truth, only that we were fighting. I guess Jane's still in denial. It's probably for the best that my father-in-law isn't around to see this, Jane was his favourite. And with my mother-in-law's dementia, she's oblivious to it all. That was a week ago. Next week, Jane is going to be served. Update. Hi everyone, I'm back with a juicy update, and I think you'll enjoy this as much as I did. I had a nice chat with Mr. P, who confessed that he faked his shoulder pain just to warn me about Baldai. Turns out, a nosy neighbor saw me kick Baldai naked out of my apartment, so in about a week, the entire condo will probably know my situation. My brother came over to help me change the locks on the door. Once he left, the loneliness hit me hard, and I cried a lot. I ended up calling my job to ask for the day off. Later that night, I spoke with my lawyer. He's working on the divorce papers, but he couldn't start until we had the video evidence. The divorce will be by mutual consent, which is smoother than an uncaused divorce, which can drag on and get nasty. He also advised me not to share the video with anyone. Jane will be served in two weeks. My sister-in-law, S.I.L., called, but I just told her to ask Jane why we're divorcing. S.I.L. came over, and after a long conversation, I ended up showing her the video. She was shocked. I drove her home, and as I passed by, I saw Jane's car parked outside her house. When I got home, I still felt crushed and broke down again. I visited my parents. My mom cried with me, she really loved Jane. My dad, though, gave me a talk about managing my finances, properties, and all that. When I returned home, Mr. P gave me an update, Jane and Baldai both showed up, but at different times. Jane came in the morning, saw my car wasn't there, and tried to enter the house, but her key didn't work anymore. She then asked Mr. P if he knew where I went. He didn't know, but handed her my attorney's card and said, Mr. O.P. gave me this for you. She took it and left. Baldai showed up later in the afternoon. He first asked to see Jane, but Mr. P made sure to say, Mrs. Jane doesn't live here anymore. Then he asked for me, and Mr. P replied, Mr. O.P. is away. No idea when he'll return. Baldai left soon after. It seems like they're not in touch yet. Part of me wanted to ask Mr. P about Jane, if she looked sad, if she was healthy, or if she asked about me. But then I remembered D-Day, and I thanked him and said good night. Once inside, I cried again. Even though I didn't feel like it, something I've learned from all of you champions is the importance of hitting the gym. So, I found a new gym near my job and had a solid workout. It felt good, better than I expected. Afterward, I went back to work and, for the first time, I didn't cry when I got home. Instead, I started taking down all the pictures of Jane. I had a meeting with my lawyer to go over my assets, and luckily, the prenup my dad made Jane sign saved me. She can't touch anything I had before the marriage, which mainly includes my house. As for the rest of the assets, they'll be split 50 to 50, but I can claim compensation for her adultery. We decided that I'll take out alimony as part of that compensation. I could fight for everything, but honestly, it all reminds me of her, and I just want a fresh start. As I was leaving my lawyer's office, I heard whispers. I turned and saw two neighbors quickly pretending they hadn't noticed me, then awkwardly greeted me as they passed by. 
I knew this was going to happen. From there, I went straight to the gym and then to work. This has pretty much been my routine all week, so I'll skip the details. I haven't set foot in my bedroom since D-Day. Instead, I've been crashing in the spare room, but I can't keep living like this. Jane has been trying to come around, probably to talk, but I don't want to see her. To avoid any confrontation, I decided to spend most of my time out of the house. Sure enough, she showed up. She also went to visit my parents and brother, but all I got were simple texts, Jane came. My response was the same to everyone, thank you, but I'm not ready to talk about her yet. That day, I spent time with my parents. We took a drive two hours out of the city to visit a small town, and honestly, we had a blast. It was a nice break from all the drama. I don't know if Jane came by while I was gone. My dad advised me not to sell my house, suggesting I rent it out instead, and I agreed. When I got home, Mr. P gave me his usual report. Baldi came by again, alone this time. He asked for me, but Mr. P told him I wasn't home. Baldi left without saying a word. Yesterday, Monday morning, I decided to go back to my old gym. I wasn't sure if I'd run into Baldi, but I knew he used to work the afternoon shift. Given that he had the afternoons free to screw my wife, I figured he might have changed his schedule. Luckily, I didn't see him. While I was waiting to talk to Frank, the gym owner, an old janitor I used to chat with stopped by. He smiled and asked me to say hi to Miss Jane. I guess this is my new reality, telling everyone we've split up. I forced a smile and nodded. Finally, Frank came out to meet me. I asked about Baldi's schedule, and Frank told me Monday is his day off. Apparently, Baldi asked for more hours and now works Tuesday to Sunday in the mornings. After that, I explained why I was really there. Frank listened carefully the entire time, and once I finished, I showed him the video. Frank stayed silent, deep in thought. After a pause, he looked at me and said, you're not going to like this. My immediate reaction was, what now? Frank then called the receptionist and asked her to bring in Harry, another coach at the gym who also happens to be Baldy's friend. Harry, as his nickname suggests, sports a huge beard. When he arrived, Frank asked him to tell me about Baldy's girlfriend. Buckle up, this is where things get good. Harry, without hesitation, revealed that Baldi is head over heels for Jane, and Frank backed it up. According to them, Baldi used to get tons of complaints, especially from female gym members, but for the past few months, he's changed. No complaints, nothing, he's been acting super professional. But then Harry dropped a bombshell that nearly knocked me off my feet. Baldi is planning to marry Jane by baby trapping her. I was still processing this wild information when a sudden feeling welled up in my chest, climbed up my throat, and finally exploded in uncontrollable laughter. And not just any laughter, I was laughing like the Joker, madly, even tearing up a bit. Frank and Harry were both confused, watching me crack up like a lunatic. In my head, I thought, Oh sweet karma, thank you. Once I calmed down, still grinning from ear to ear, Harry nervously asked, what's going on? Frank, finally getting it, replied, this is Baldy's girlfriend's husband. Harry's face went pale. Oh man. This is bad, this is really messed up. Without another word, Harry bolted out of the room. Next, we shifted the conversation to Baldy's future at the gym. Frank explained he'd need to report the situation to the coach association, not the real name, and it was highly likely Baldi would be fired. Since Jane was a gym member, Frank's gym could face legal issues if he didn't act. I asked if Baldi could lose his license. Frank nodded and said I'd need to provide a legal document explaining that Baldi's actions led to my divorce, along with the divorce case number and the video as evidence. My attorney will handle delivering the video to the coach association's attorney. Though I can't share it publicly, it's enough to cause Baldi to lose his license, at least with this association. He could still apply for another license from a different association, but that process could take months. I asked if Baldi could appeal. 
Frank shrugged, saying it would be a waste of time since the association doesn't tolerate this type of behavior, and Baldai doesn't have the money to hire a proper defense. This got me thinking about the fancy residential area where I saw Baldai enter with Jane. I had assumed he was wealthy. I mentioned this to Frank, and his face suddenly hardened. What residential area? he asked. I pulled out my phone, opened the Maps app, and pointed to the location. I followed them here the day before D-Day, I explained. Frank's expression shifted from surprise to anger. That's my late father's house, he exclaimed. He explained that after his father passed away, he inherited the house. It's where they store old or broken gym equipment. Frank had given Baldai a key to access the place occasionally, but he wasn't allowed to live there. Now it looked like Baldai had made himself at home without permission. Frank assured me he was going to investigate it further, adding that the area is full of security cameras, so it should be easy to find out if Baldai has been living there illegally. I was leaving the gym when I heard someone call, Mr. O.P. Mr. O.P., wait! It was Harry, running to catch up with me. He looked genuinely concerned. I'm really sorry about what's happening. Baldai never told me who his girlfriend was. He just said he met her at XXX Mall. I thanked him, taking a step toward the exit. But he rushed after me. Can you tell me what happened? Pretty much what you heard. He was screwing my wife, and now I'm divorcing her. I took another step, but he pressed on. What will happen to Baldai? That depends on Frank and the Coach Association. I tried to move again, but Harry was relentless. But how are you handling it? This was getting strange. I stared at Harry, remembering Baldai had visited my house twice. I suddenly said, you called Baldai, and he's on his way here, right? You're just buying time. Am I wrong? He made a guilty face, confirming my suspicion. Please, Mr. O.P., talk to him. He's really desperate. He was crying yesterday. His girlf. I mean, your wife isn't returning his calls. Why should I care if he's rotting in hell? I shot back. I'll be here with you, so you won't be scared, he said, his voice earnest. I couldn't help but laugh. Scared? Of that weakling? He didn't tell you I kicked him out of my house naked, right? Harry didn't believe me. Fine, I said, let's see what he wants. I noticed the cameras pointed at us, so I sat at a table in the reception area. I figured Baldi wouldn't be stupid enough to attack me, but I was curious about what he had to say. He came running ten minutes later, and when he saw me waiting, he extended his hand. I crossed my arms, leaving him hanging. What the hell do you want? I locked my angry gaze onto his. He sat down in front of me. Listen, buddy, stop right there. We're not buddies. Mr. S., the janitor, is my buddy. You are not. He looked apologetic. Okay, my bad. I want to say I'm sorry for everything. I never wanted to hurt you, and I really care about Jane. Well, you just told three lies to my face. You're not sorry, you did mean to destroy my life, and you only care about yourself. His demeanor shifted from apologetic to annoyed. Okay, whatever, man. Just tell me where Jane is. Last time I saw her, I kicked her cheating us out of my house after I kicked you out naked. I glanced over at Harry, who was listening intently. Baldy's face turned bright red. That was a cheap shot. I should sue you. As far as I know, you entered my home illegally, and maybe you were raping my wife. I have videos of you leaving, but you didn't sign in. Baldy's tone shifted again. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Just tell me what you want from me. Please, tell Jane I need to speak to her. At that moment, Frank rushed in, likely alerted by the cameras. Everything okay here? Everything is fine, Frank. I was just telling this sissy what I want. I stood up and leaned in close to Baldy's face. What I want is what's coming for you. 
What you deserve. What the law has prepared for you. I want to crush your dreams just like you did with mine. You want kids? Guess what? You won't, and you will never have. Baldai opened his mouth to respond, but Frank interrupted him, directing him to his office. Harry looked impressed as he grabbed Baldy's arm and pulled him away. Dude, you're in deep shit. Finally, I left the gym, a grin still plastered on my face. I felt ready to face Jane now. As I typed this out, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief and empowerment. Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.